Good morning, everyone. We are continuing our new series this morning, going through the lessons and merging with Shiva, commenting on them, and doing it in chronological order, meaning the talks that were given earlier will be done first. And the first talk, which we're doing the second lesson of, is River of Life. So this is continuing with the second lesson of River of Life. A little bit about the Ganges first. It's interesting facts. Of course, Ganges is the English word. The word in Indian language is Ganga, long A on the second A. Ganga. Swami Harshananda's Encyclopedia of Hinduism has an excellent description from the religious point of view. In other words, you could look at a river historically uh, in terms of nature, in terms of economy. This is looking at it in terms of Hinduism. The rivers of a country are its lifeline. Hindu India has always looked upon its rivers not just as physical or natural objects, but as divinities, goddesses of prosperity. Of all the rivers of India, no river has captivated the minds and hearts of the people more than the river Ganga. For many a Hindu, a bath in it is a lifetime's ambition. No religious act can be ceremonially complete without its water being used in some form or the other. A bath in any river cleanses the body, but a bath in the holy river Ganga, that too when the proper procedure prescribed in the religious treatises is followed, purifies the mind too. Following are the various steps given to be followed by an earnest pilgrim who wishes to take a ritual bath in the Holy River. Nicely written. Sankalpa. He describes Sankalpa. Pious resolve indicating the desire to destroy one's sins and acquire religious merit. I have a way of describing that. Usually it's in terms of taipusam, carrying of cavity. That's the most frequent uh, penance or prayas chitta that comes in on my email. Every year, a few in various countries. So when they ask how to go about it, I give a suggestion on the Sankalpa, what they have in mind in doing it. Need to have in mind the actions which you regret doing. Asking the deity, in that case Lord Murugan's blessings, to get rid of those negative karmas and promising you'll try your best not to do it again. (laughs) I think that's an important part. We're not supposed to just keep doing the same thing over and over again and go to the deity to forgive us every year. (laughs) We're trying to actually improve our behavior. After Sankalpa, selecting a suitable spot in the river for taking the bath, repeating mantras, water sipping, Avahana, invitation to the river goddess to be present at that particular spot by uttering her names. Parakshana, sprinkling water on the head. 
Kalepana, applying river clay to the body. Snana, a bath. Achamana, wearing of clean white clothes. Tarpana, offerings. Argya, offering watering to Surya. And then after the bath, visiting a temple and returning home. Nicely described. Some days are more auspicious for bathing in the Ganga than others. He lists the following. Amavasya, new moon. Sankranti, entering a new zodiac sign. Lunar and solar eclipses. And Pushkara, it's the day Jupiter enters Aries once every 12 years. Interesting days. That's our introduction on Ganga. And we get <clears throat> Tuesday's Lesson 23, Affectionate Detachment. Meditate on a river. Follow it as a visual image from its source to the end where it merges into the sea. You can now clearly see where you have been clinging to the bank of life's river. You will plainly see just how long you have been clinging to various attachments by holding on to fears, worries, doubts of the future, and regrets about the past. Looking at attachment, we see how it holds the mind down, how it submerges personality. Attachment is a stationary thing. Attachment creates the personality. The popular concept of the intellect at this point would be to say, well then, according to this, we are not supposed to be attached to anything or even have a personality. But I take this one step farther and tell you, become affectionately detached, for by becoming affectionately detached, you absorb all the power of the spiritual force within you. When you absorb the power of the spirit through the body, you will be able to feel it flowing through your most subtle nerves. This vibrant spiritual force within you, vibrating through every cell of the body, quieting the emotions and bringing the mind into effortless concentration, is born of affectionate detachment. Affectionate detachment is stronger than any attachment could possibly be, because attachment is created through unfulfilled desire, salted and peppered with fear. Fear of loss, fear of the unexpected, fear that life may not have much more to offer than what has already been offered. Fear of old age, fear of harm, fear of accident. These are the fears which salt and pepper the unfulfilled desires. This is attachment. To be affectionately detached, that is a power, that is a wisdom. That is a love greater than any emotional love, a love born of understanding, a love that merges you into the river of life and allows actinic force to flow within you so that you realize God. We all still have those little attachments, <clears throat> the good ones, the need for love, acceptance, and security. These attachments form the positive aspects of the subconscious. We want to free ourselves of all negative attachments. Then use the subconscious positively as a powerhouse directed by our superconsciousness. There is a great wisdom in cultivated affectionate detachment. Let go of the past. Let go of the future. Be a being right now. Being detached does not mean running away from life or being insensitive. It makes us extremely sensitive. When we have the ability to let go, we are warmer, more friendly, more wholesome, more human and closer to our family and friends. And I have a few comments on all of that. Great, if I made a very important point, the popular concept of detachment 
you ask someone to be detached and kind of an ordinary response is they just stand back and they don't care anymore. <laughs> Become a cold person toward the situation. So that's not what Gurudeva wants. He doesn't want cold detachment. He wants affectionate detachment. He ex- describes that by saying, when we have the ability to let go, we are warmer, more friendly, more wholesome, more human and closer to our family and friends. And the way I like to describe that is we're not depending on them for strength, inspiration and all, but we're finding that within ourselves and sharing it with others. So that's the difference. Attachment is depending on others for strength and inspiration and Affectionate detachment is finding that within ourselves and then sharing it with others in a friendly way. Gurudeva also makes the point, just to be clear, that some attachments are good. He lists them. The need for love, acceptance, and security. These attachments form the positive aspects of the subconscious and we just want to free ourselves of the negative ones. So that's a clarification. Free yourself of the negative attachments and use the subconscious positively as a powerhouse directed by your superconscious. Then we get the idea of fear. Gurudeva said, affectionate detachment is stronger than any attachment could possibly be because attachment is created through unfulfilled desire, salted and peppered with fear. Fear of loss, fear of the unexpected. Fear that life may not have much more to offer than has already been offered. Fear of old age, fear of harm, fear of accident. These are the fears which salt and pepper the unfulfilled desires. This is attachment. Fortunately, Gurudeva gives us a number of ways in his teachings for overcoming fear. So if we end up in a fearful state, We want to move out of it as quickly as possible. What are some common examples? Uh, An important event, we get kind of fearful. We have an important job interview coming up. Or a student has a major exam that determines his or her whole whole future in the academic world. Oh, it's natural to be a little fearful. One of the simplest techniques Gurudeva gives us is simply taking time to regulate the breath. Basic pranayama. Doing that for a few days every day before the exam. Say for a week before the exam or the interview, we take time to center ourselves through pranayama and get ourselves calm by regulating the breath. And in that way, we can minimize fear. So that's just one of the tools. There's a number of them that Gurudeva gives for moving our awareness out of the state of consciousness of fear. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.